Hi everyone, it is a hot summer morning and I just wanted to give you a tour of my garden now that it's starting to produce more. It's a little bit more exciting, you can see more of what's going on. I would be lying to you if I said I didn't have any trepidation about showing you my garden because I was a little self-conscious. Uh, due to personal circumstances, I just haven't made the time needed to weed the garden as much and be on top of it as much as I usually am and it shows. My garden is not perfect. I even thought about cleaning it up before I gave you a tour today and then I was like, you know, I'm not alone. Things come up in life, we get busy, and I'm not the only person that has things that come up. So I just wanted to show you that you can still have a very productive garden even though it might not look like some of those gardens that you see in a lot of videos or magazines or whatnot. So it doesn't have to look perfect in order to be functional. And I'm starting today in one of my favorite places, which is on my back deck. I have a beautiful pergola that my husband made for me. And it's taken three years, but I have some great vines that are coming up now. I make that four years, sorry, four years that it's taken. And you might have seen some of my videos on trimming grape vines. I do it twice a year, once in the summer and once in the winter. And it's really filled out the whole entire pergola. It's a great place to have a cup of coffee in the morning and just sit out here and get some peace and quiet. So I hope you enjoy and let's get to the tour. Welcome to True Freedom Permaculture, where I show you all the tips and tricks you need to have a green thumb, even if you weren't born with one. Okay, so I've got a cucumber vine here, it's starting to trellis up onto the teepee. And over here we have our green zebra tomato plant with some scallions in the back here and I just kind of harvest as I go as needed. This is a squash plant. It's a Romanesco squash and I'm really happy with the squash themselves. I actually just picked one so I don't have a good example to show you right now but they're so beautiful. If I have one I'll, a picture of it I'll put it up on the screen but uh, the only downside I would say is that with this type of squash, I do feel like it produces more male blossoms and it's great because you can still eat the squash blossoms, but as far as the female blossoms, they are less frequent. So you might not get as big of a yield, but I like the texture, the flavor, and the appearance of the Romanesco squash. It really is so beautiful. Some basil over here. This is my gorgeous hops vine that I'm growing on my deer fence and the deer don't touch it and I just think that the hops flowers themselves are so beautiful this is my giant goji berry you can see a single goji berry there but I just started to get the purple flowers so we should start seeing the fruit soon and I literally don't have to do anything to this plant. It's so hardy, drought tolerant, and it just does its thing and I get massive yields of goji berries. I've got another tomato plant here and you can see here that it's a little bit smaller than the other ones and the reason for that is because I actually had forgotten that I had put a whole crop of uh, potatoes here and so I just pulled them up as new potatoes last week and that will hopefully allow this tomato plant to get some more light so it can kind of catch up with the other ones. Hey you're still with me that's great let's continue the tour onward. So over here I have my comfrey and its taproot is so great for digging into the soil, aerating the soil. We all know about, well, I shouldn't say that, but many of you know about the benefits of comfrey and how it can be a medicinal plant as well. Got some oregano here as ground cover. I also have a blueberry here and I haven't gotten it to fruit yet so I need to look into that whether or not it's not getting enough sun or I need to change the soil so it's still alive but still yet to get any fruit. Now this is my calendula patch. So every morning I come out here and I pick some of the flowers and I will some of the spent flowers I'll just let go to seed, but 
they're great for medicinal uses. I went into that into another video, so I'm not going to get into that now. But this was actually a polyculture bed that had several different crops going at different times. And this is kind of the end of the season for it. So I'm really just letting the calendula do its thing. And I'm not weeding it as much because oh, they've already pulled up a lot of the crops. You can see here, though, I still have some scallions there and I've got some carrots too still growing so again I harvest as I need got some kale in here too the dill aren't those flowers so beautiful now the dill has actually self-seeded but it was a nice surprise because I didn't plant any this year so it's nice to be able to pick some when I want it. Over here, you have our kale bed. This is a white Russian kale. It's my first year growing it, and I really like the leaves. I just think they're so pretty. All right, so this is my perennial bed. And I've done a few videos on asparagus. So I really let all of these grow now into ferns so that they can regenerate and produce another crop next year. You're also going to see some Jerusalem artichoke or sunchoke in the back. So I'll start pulling those up later this year. And in the back here, I've got some horseradish. It doesn't need full sun, so I just plop it in the back. So again, I got some oregano as ground cover surrounding my Granny Smith apple tree. Now this is the first year that we've actually gotten apples and I thought I was going to have to plant more trees because I was told that you need two other trees that bloom at the same time in order to yield fruit, but we actually have some fruit growing here. got some corn here growing. I got it in a little late this year, so it's not as big as it would normally be, but some of it started tasseling, so hopefully we'll get at least a few years. Would be nice. All right, guys, this is my leek bed, and it was supposed to be more leeks originally, but then I got these massive sun chokes, and I love sun chokes, so why not go with it? So the sun chokes have really kind of overtaken the bed a little bit, but I still have leeks and that's okay. So they are growing there. Here I have some tomatoes. Now these only get sun really from the west. So it doesn't get as much sun as the tomatoes that are planted to the south of my house. So the tomatoes to the south of my house are already ripening and I'm harvesting them, but these are coming along a little bit slower, but that's okay. I mean, you can still see that the tomatoes are producing. And it's actually kind of nice because it spreads out the tomato harvest time for us. And I'm having some work done on the house, so we're getting our house resided right now. And because of that, my blackberry bushes, I mean, my contractors tried, they really did. But there's only so much you can do, and so they ended up getting a little bit crushed. But I still have the blackberry bushes there. They're gonna come back, they're resilient. And I've got some celery growing here, and some celeriac. Another random bunch of leeks over here. You can see the strawberries that sort of serve as a ground cover. Obviously they're done for this season, but they'll produce again next year. All right, so that wraps up my garden tour for today. I hope you had a good time, and it just goes to show you that you really don't need a lot of land, and you don't have to have a perfect garden in order to produce ample food for you and your family. I'll see you all soon.